In this video, we're diving deep into torque settings on three-phase distribution boards and deciding which of these stripped back tails is the one we'd use. Because it's not just about how you make up your tails, it's also how tight you terminate them. But more on that later. So how do you terminate yours? Because everyone's got a method that they swear by. And are you using a torque screwdriver to torque up your terminations? Or are you still relying on your arm? And knowing the difference between too tight, not tight enough, or when tight is just tight. Well, we're going to be putting termination tightness to the test. And we're going to be doing that with the Protego 125 three-phase distribution board from Niglon. It's built to BSEN 61439-3. So straight away, we know that it meets the requirements of a low voltage switch gear assemblies. And it's actually a really well thought out board, but it's going to be no good if the terminations fail. Got this handy little container here and inside there, you can just see my nuts for my distribution board, which always get lost or fall on the floor. Just watch this. Oh, they're not going anywhere. And it's got another secret. Not only that is that I could stick it to the side of my distribution board. Marvellous. It accepts single phase and three phase breakers as you would expect. And of course, three phase RCBOs, all using the same bus bar system, which makes it easier when you're configuring the protection exactly how the project demands without swapping rails or accessories. The removable top and bottom glam plates make it simple to prepare your entries outside the board and fit them back with a degree of control. And it suits both residential and commercial work. And the interchangeable door is quite a handy feature. The fully shrouded terminals give extra protection when tightening conductors, vital when we are talking about torque accuracy. And the chassis can be removed, which will let you dress the cables properly before refitting. The Protego 125 runs from four way up to 24, and it can be extended later if the installation grows. And you can fit extension boxes if you're adding timers or contactors. The base plate has these three molded dimples underneath. Going to go in with a hole saw next, and it's always a fearful moment, is it? Because if it jumps around on the bottom of the distribution board, it can leave a nasty mess before the gland goes in and can't always be covered by the nut of the gland. But what's beautiful here is there's a little recessed dimple in three different positions. That means my pilot drill will find its way exactly into the center one there making it considerably easier to install. We really like the surge protection kit. It comes with a pre-wired bus bar and the neutral can pass through this pre-drilled and grommeted hole into the neutral bar. There's a short earth lead as well for easy compliance with the regs. And the board can be converted to single phase with this cone kit. And Niglon's compact three-phase RCBOs are only three modules wide, but still include that neutral connection. And they're available from B to D curves for those inductive or higher inrush loads. So on the face of it, this is a really good and sturdy board and perfect for our termination test. So let's be clear on torque. Torque is the turning pressure that we apply onto the screw, which in turn provides pressure onto the termination. But there are some variables, the type of the termination, the type and size of the screw, and the cross-sectional area and strand of the conductor itself. We're gonna be focusing our test on stranded conductors going into cage type terminations. So if we make off our termination and the torque is too low, then the conductor is not gonna be gripped sufficiently enough it can loosen arc and heat up certainly if the distribution board was in a factory where there was lots of vibration over time it could heat up causing stresses on the conductor and the protective device itself if we over tighten we could crush the copper inside the termination this is potentially worse than it being too loose both aren't great, but over tightening can chew through the copper strands. And if they snap off, that can make the termination even looser. Although we weren't able to pull the conductor out in our example, the conductors were damaged to such a point that they snapped off too easily. This is why manufacturers do specify torque settings on their devices. And the only way we're gonna know we've torqued it correctly is by using a calibrated torque screwdriver. But it may be frustrating that even in this distribution board from Niglon, that there are different torque settings for different protective devices. But there is a reason for that. Different sized screws require different torque settings. So the larger the screw, the larger the torque rating required to get a safe termination. And it works the other way around for the smaller screw. I mean, Niglon have printed it three times in this distribution board, which goes to show how they take it seriously that they're torqued correctly. And this isn't just our opinion. Electrical Safety First actually commissioned independent testing to see what happens to meter tail terminations when the tails are disturbed during a meter change. 
change. The study looked at how movement, twisting, and retermination affected the tightness of the main switch connections in consumer units. They tested different types of terminals, torques, and conductor preparations, including seven and 19 strand meter tails to measure how secure those terminations stayed once the tails had been flexed or repositioned. The findings were clear. Disturbing meter tails can loosen connections that were previously taught correctly, sometimes enough to allow the conductor to move or even pull out. But here's a question. Do you check the tightness of tails in the consumer unit before you leave site? Because according to the report, many companies carrying out smart meter changes are not. So should checking the torque on incoming meter tails be part of every installation handover? Let me know what you think in the comments. So making sure those torque settings are correct is one thing, how we dress the conductor into the termination is another. And I'm interested to know how you terminate yours. We'd love your comments. These are the three choices. Choice number one for our connection, choice number two, or choice number three, in order to make the connection with the bottom of the cage clamp of the main switch. When we reveal ours, when we disconnect the neutral conductor later on in the video, please leave your comments below which one of the three connecting methods you would select. So as beautiful as method one looked, it did take a lot of time to make off that conductor. If I was wiring a big plant room, I'm probably not gonna opt for that. Conductor two was straightforward enough to do. We just twisted the conductors with a pair of pliers together. Conductor three, we squashed the termination on the theory that when it goes into the cage termination and we tighten it, the strands spread out within the termination or flatten as it's getting tightened in there. We talked our three termination to the manufacturer's recommendation and gave them a tug test to see if the three methods we used would come out. But, and thankfully, they all stayed in place. And which was our preferred termination? So let's reveal what we decided to do with the neutral conductor. We took those individual strands and crushed them flat with our pliers before putting into the bottom of that cage clamp. What was your selection? Was it the same as ours or was it one of the other ones? This was an interesting test for us to do because it really did stress the importance of ensuring correct torque settings. They are printed on there for a reason. And I know it sounds almost cliche, loose wires cause fires. And Niglon have even printed that on their distribution boards. But what do you think? Does your years of experience in the electrical industry know when tight is tight, too tight is too tight, and not tight is not tight enough? But I firmly believe that torque isn't optional. It's for compliance, safety, and good workmanship. Big thanks to the peeps at Niglon for letting us loose on their Protego 125 three-phase distribution board. A cracking bit of kit that survived all that Rick and Gary had to throw at it. And don't forget, if you've got a question you want me to answer, then send it to willittrip at efix.co.uk.